Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about Venom Lethal Protector number four of the 2022 series that is written by David Michelini and art by Ivan Fiorelli. And uh, if you're wondering whether I think this series is getting better or worse, uh, I'm just going to spoil that right now and say it's definitely getting worse, at least from a a pacing and story structure standpoint and even an editing standpoint um, although I feel like we get more evidence of when this story might be taking place but I feel like that still contradicts other things that have happened already in the series but I have a, a possible theory about that but I feel like I'm doing a lot of work for Marvel and the editing team and David McLeany of pinpointing exactly when this story takes place and some people might say hey it, it doesn't matter it's you know it's about the journey or whatever and it's like yes but if you don't know when in the journey this takes takes place it it screws with you and it keeps taking me out of the story and it's uh, it's kind of driving me nuts um, but Ivan's artwork is is great so I, I'm at least liking that for the most part but the actual book itself like I, I just I don't understand like in the first issue they're like oh here's the life foundation and we have this lady that's working for them and she's a scientist who's gonna do some things and tweak the venom costume you know and uh, the symbiote so that it's uh, you know doesn't get feel pain from fire or sound anymore or whatever and it's like oh, okay wh well how's that gonna play into the continuity and obviously she'll do it probably temporarily but then that's gonna go away because even now still he's you know has a, a, an allergy to fire and sound and stuff so I'm like how are they gonna do this and how they, and then they just drop that or issue three they're like ah, eh, she's dead and you know or maybe it was issue two i can't remember but it's like she's dead the scientist is dead the life foundation is no longer there and then i was like oh well the life foundation must be the ones who hired all these bounty hunters to come after venom well in this issue we, we find out that that's not the case it's not the life foundation it's justin hammer <laughs> you know and who's like this iron man villain who uh you know was uh, played in the second iron man movie but i actually it's funny they mentioned justin hammer because there's a spider-man script that i wrote uh, many years ago for spider-man 4 for a potential Spider-Man 4 for Sam Raimi um, back when I was working at Sony and so me and my friends you know they were look you know I we heard they were looking for pitches and stuff for for potential Spider-Man projects so we wrote one and we turned it in and uh, I don't think it got anywhere really but it was still fun because we got it registered with the Writers Guild you know and everything and we had Venom uh, well we had the symbiote uh, sliver from the third movie still in there and it was tied to um, you know Lizard and and we had Craven be a part of the story as well so uh, and then we had an opening with Mysterio played by Bruce Campbell like written in there so so we, you know it was a lot of fun to do a project like that and but we had Justin Hammer in the script and uh and then it was funny they ended up using him in the Iron Man movie, which kind of makes sense. I think he's more of like an Iron Man level villain anyway. Uh, but then now he's here and he's hiring all these goons with the $200,000 bounty to go after Venom. And I'm like, why does Justin Hammer like because here's the thing. It's like in this book that opens, first of all, with Venom you know talking to the news and uh, he's like they set up like an interview with him and he's like yes i just want to let everyone know that i'm going to be at uh, dodger stadium or whatever and i'm gonna um I'm, I'm gonna wait for these bounty hunters to come get me so if you want to know where i am bounty hunters this is where i am and then and then he also says to the news lady oh by the way i knew this was a double cross too so now i'm gonna leave and he runs out as guards show up to shoot him or something and i'm like what like why so venom's publicly on tv doing an interview uh <laughs> saying he's gonna be at dodger stadium but Spider-Man doesn't show up uh, and you're like so when does this take place and then so right when I was like okay this makes no sense Venom now is publicly going out there and people are calling him Venom like this uh, Charlene lady on the news calls him Venom and I'm like I don't I'm, I'm so confused <laughs> like I thought he does Spider-Man I thought Spider-Man didn't know he existed yet because in the first issue they went out of their way to show Spider-Man swing by you know, uh, ignoring the battle or whatever, so that to show that they're not meeting each other yet, and that Venom still wants to get his revenge on Spider-Man. But then he's meeting villains that don't show up in Spider-Man comics till much later. And then in this issue, he runs into Sticks and Stones, uh, who he fought, I think, in issue 333 of Amazing Spider-Man. They showed up fighting Spider-Man, and Venom was there and stuff. And uh, and then Venom already knows who they are. So when they show up in this issue, he's like, "Oh, Sticks and Stone," and, I'm like, and he knows how their powers work and everything. I'm like. And, and they even reference, they say, this takes, you know, this happened in Amazing Spider-Man 333. And I'm like, 
yeah, I know, <laughs> but but Venom has met Spider-Man <laughs> before that, uh, so I feel like I'm just going crazy. <laughs> the, the reading this book, it's just making me go crazy and worry too much about the continuity and not really appreciate maybe what Michelini's trying to do with just having a fun story. But even still, it's not even that fun of a story. So like once I start stripping away the, okay, don't focus on continuity. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Let's just say right now, this takes place somewhere between issue 333 of Spider-Man and issue 375 of Amazing Spider-Man. Somewhere between those uh, issues, that's when this takes place. So maybe he does know Spider-Man. They've already met. Um, and that's kind of my theory is that they've already met and they're just doing whatever they can to not have them interact in this book. Um, but it just, it's so much work to like piece all this together for no reason. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. This is by far one of the worst out of all the Marvel stuff where they, they hire a writer that used to write these characters, like Peter David. They had him come back and do symbiote Spider-Man stuff. Um, and those, I thought there was some inconsistencies with the continuity, but not that many and not not some that were so egregious. Uh, he, right now he's doing the new Fantastic Four uh, miniseries, Peter David is, and that's also set in the past. And that one's doing a pretty good job of staying within the continuity. Uh, but this one, David Michelini, he wrote the original Lethal Protector. He wrote Amazing Spider-Man during all those years that this is taking place, and yet, no one's keeping track of when this should be, you know, set in the timeline, and it feels like it's jumping around. And the only thing I could think of is the first issue maybe takes place before Amazing 300, and the second issue takes place right after, and the third issue. But again, the book doesn't tell you that, so I, I feel like I'm just doing all the work for Devin Lewis and Tom, uh, what's his name, Tom Grome, Groneman, I think, who's the associate editor, assistant editor. Like, I feel like I'm doing all their work for them. Um, and But they threw us a, a curve, like a little a little nugget, not a curveball, but a little nugget of, hey, this takes place, you know, this happened in Amazing 333. So it's like, okay, so this miniseries is after that, but why avoid Spider-Man <laughs> then? I don't understand stand uh whatever it doesn't make sense and i don't care um there was some cool moments though with sticks and stone where where venom grabbed uh you know sticks hands i think or stone's hand and then it was he was because he if he touches someone he kills them so he grabs his hands and uh puts them or grabs his wrists uh from through his clothes he you know, grabs his clothes so there's no skin contact and he's putting his hands towards uh sticks face and he's like all right like if you touch your friend he's gonna die and uh and so he's like unless you tell me who hired you and that's when he goes justin hammer hired us and it's like okay and so venom's like i gotta figure out now who the hell is Justin Hammer? And then they cut to Justin Hammer sitting on a beach with like his manservant coming in and saying like, hey, you know, Venom found out about us. And, and Justin Hammer's like, yeah, I knew it was gonna happen eventually. Like when he shows up, invite him in. And I'm just like, I don't care about this story anymore. <laughs> I just don't care. And I feel like Marvel on some level doesn't either. I think they were just like, hey, let's get another Venom book out there. Let's bring David McLeany back. That'll be the big selling point. This will be our version of Symbiote Spider-Man or New Fantastic Four. One of these stories that takes place in past continuities. But it just feels like they everyone's just phoning it in and just doing the bare minimum except the artist who i think is drawing his brains out uh trying to you know trying to make this work uh on some level visually uh but uh but the story structure and everything is bad and i don't maybe who knows maybe the editor maybe they gave the artist a, a brief outline of basic what's going to happen in the story and then he drew a bunch of stuff and now they're you know they have to add the text on top of it maybe they're doing it old school marvel style um and it's just not working it's not a good you know uh team up between writer and artist uh, sometimes that happens um but then that's where the editors need to come in and, and streamline it and make it make sense in some way and it's just not it's lo it's lost me completely I, I think i actually rated this on goodreads or something uh with a two stars or an amazon or something with two stars uh, and that's being generous like uh, two out of five stars is being very generous uh, and i think i only gave it two stars for the artwork uh, you know so and i hate the bag on like michelini and even like the editors on this like i know everyone does their best and i know michelini's been he's written some of the best spider-man stuff out there in my opinion uh, but and some good Venom stuff, but this is just nowhere near any of that. Uh, this is bad, like so bad. It can't even stay straight with what story it wants to tell. I mean, the only thing that's been consistent is that Venom still hates Spider-Man and that there's a bounty on Venom's head now from Justin Hammer and we don't know why. So that's all that, the only thing that's been consistent in this. Everything else has just been random. Like Taskmaster shows up in this and he's training Death Shield now. So I'm imagining that in the next issue, they're working for Hammer 
and it's going to be Taskmaster and Death Shield and Stiletto versus Venom on Justin Hammer's, you know, little resort island or wherever he is. I imagine that's going to be part of the conclusion of this. Um, there's a scene in here with Anne Wang where Venom goes to her and she yells at him and says, hey, you know, my fiance is now my ex-fiance because he left because you threatened him. And I'm like, yeah, but didn't he threaten him as Venom or did he threaten him as Eddie? I can't I can't remember. <laughs> and I honestly don't care. Uh, but Anne knows that, you know, he got threatened and, and had to leave. And then she even alluded to maybe she knew he wasn't a good guy and she was planning on breaking up with him anyway. So then you're like, so what's the point of the story? And then there's like a mugging where a guy gets stabbed right in front of Venom. Like he's sitting there going, hmm, should I help out or should I wait and see if Spider-Man shows up and then kill Spider-Man? And then the guy, some guy, innocent guy dies. And I'm like, come on, Venom, like just jump in and help. I thought you'd protect innocence. Uh, I don't know. And I know sometimes he's, you know, confused about that term and stuff. But especially in this time period. But still, I just was like, this is so bad. It's just random scene, random scene, random scene. And then, like, let's try to make some sense out of it. Only they give up. <laughs> and that's where I am. I give up. Uh, I will definitely review the last issue of, for everyone and give you my thoughts on it. But this was just so bad. I, I really just don't like this book anymore. Uh, it feels like homework. And it feels like I have to, like, make that Charlie Kelly from, uh, the, you know, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, that board with all the, the lines going through it and connecting dots. Like, I just, I'm like, well, I'm not getting paid as an editor for Marvel to make this book make sense. So why am I doing all this work? Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, get your shit together, people making this book, uh, try to stick the landing if you can, if it's not too late, although it's probably already off to the printers by now. Um, but next time you do a Venom book like this, first of all, call it Lethal Protector, colon something, you know, like we've had, Venom Lethal Protector in the 90s, which Dave Nicolini wrote. Then we had like five or six years ago, we had the Mike Costa one, which was called Lethal Protector colon Blood in the Water. Uh, so do that. Call this Lethal Protector colon something when you put it in trade. Because it's just, it's a confusing mess. And I don't even know why I use the term Lethal Protector. I'm, I feel like you heard that it was going to be used in as a line in the Venom, uh, you know, Let There Be Carnage movie. And you're like, we got to capitalize on that. And it it, it, it feels like it. it. It feels like you it was tacked on and that there was no real plan for this book. Uh, because it's fun seeing Venom fight Hydra Man or get a rematch with Sticks and Stone or fight Death Shield uh, or hopefully Taskmaster in the next issue. Like, those are all cool things to see. But you need to come up with a better story of, you know, how it all connects. So, you know, this is uh, this is fairly very poorly done in my opinion uh so but that's like i guess that's my opinion if you have a different one if you thought this issue was amazing or something let me know down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there um i think for my next venom vlog i'm gonna do an unboxing video of the marvel versus capcom countertop arcade and play a little bit of marvel vs. capcom as venom uh to just kind of see you know show off some of the features and stuff i know other people who do tech reviews and do like uh, arcade reviews they do a better job, I'm sure, but I'm going to still try to have some fun with it and, and make it a fun Venom vlog episode. And then with Across the Spider-Verse coming out, I feel like we could dive in back into some of those Spider-Man characters again. So we might do some Spider-Man 2099 stuff, starting with some toy reviews coming up very soon. And I, I, as you see, I'm in my new apartment and everything. So you'll see a video um, with a tour coming up as well. But that'll be more DC related because as you can see back there, it's all my DC stuff. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching the show as always. Thanks for being so patient. I, it took me about two and a half, three weeks to move into this place and get everything situated. And then with work and life and in my you know condition the stuff i've been balancing uh doing therapy like all that stuff it's, it's been a lot so i appreciate you all being you know very patient with me um and then also ace who i gotta take to the vet uh tomorrow but he's doing very well um and and he's definitely gotten a lot healthier since the last time we've made videos so uh and that was only like two weeks ago so uh you know he's gonna continue to improve and uh, and i'm happy to have him here and he's you know already claiming the lay of the land like the bed he messes up every single day uh, every time i make it he ruins it like 10 minutes <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a, a never ending battle between us. So, um, but yeah, overall I'm, I'm liking, you know, the new place is great. I like the uh, environment here. Um, the, the location is great for me for work. And, uh, and I'm also near a lot of things that I've always wanted to do since I've lived here in Florida and now I can, you know, do them more easily, uh, including being closer to a comic book store. Um, so I'm happy about that too. So, uh, so I'll have more comic reviews coming up for y'all very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.